Ever since I was a student, I have been fascinated by the tension between the alterity of the Middle Ages and the continued residence of aspects of the Middle Ages into the present. Uh, medieval people thought, believed, and acted in ways very different from the way modern people live. As has been said, the past is a foreign country, and the Middle Ages are in many ways very alien to the present. And yet, at the same time, so much of what is a society and the culture, not only of Europe, but of America, and in fact, now the whole world, derives in complicated ways, for good and from bad, from development, developments that have their beginning in this period of European history. So it's always seemed to me very important for us, whether we're Americans or Europeans, uh, to understand this tension, this combination of the importance of a medieval past uh, within a presence, but at the same time, the very great difference that separates us from that world. We received our categories of identity and group identity from categories inherited from late antiquity and the Middle Ages. Uh, uh, we understand the world in these categories that reflect are reflected in medieval texts, medieval sources that talk about peoples, uh, peoples that or as an ideal uh, groups of solidarity in terms of background, culture, uh, language, uh, and sometimes one even imagines some kind of biological uh, continuity. Uh, in fact, these creations are creations of late antique ethnography and the early Middle Ages. And we live in a world in which these labels and categories continue to resonate within our society and are reactivated ideologically from time to time within a European and uh, 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 European as well as American uh, traditions. Uh, so we have to understand the importance of these categories, but also how they were fundamentally reinterpreted, I would say misinterpreted, at the end of the 18th and in the 19th century in the cause of the nation state. And this reinterpretation, this distortion, this creation of identity groups that are then projected into the distant medieval past has become a very powerful and in ways dangerous inheritance from this period. So as a medievalist, I find it important to return to these sources to understand what they were really talking about, how identity was really understood, to get behind the romantic nationalism of the 19th century and the destructive nationalisms of the 20th and 21st in order to better understand the deep past of identity formation within a European perspective. First, I think that studying ancient genomes teaches us how very mixed we are as peoples. Uh, the combination of genetic uh, uh, inheritances from many different directions, the admixtures over generations, show us how completely mixed the human race is. Uh, it shows us how the idea of separate races has no foundation in biology. As the uh, Jena uh, uh, the statement on racism put it, racism is the foundation of races. Races are not the foundation of racism. So I think that it's very important that we understand through 
a proper understanding of genetics and genetic history, the processes by which modern populations came to uh, be as they are. I think that this is a kind of deep history into uh, European and indeed world history that shows us how very connected the entire Eurasian continent has been for uh, millennia. American students continue in large part to be fascinated by the Middle Ages. However, I think that their interest is rather different from that of most European students. Americans are in some ways the inheritors of a transformed uh, culture of the Middle Ages, but not of its political culture. We do not live in political institutions or in a geographical area that identifies directly with the Middle Ages. And our students tend to be drawn more toward medieval culture, religion, art, the aesthetics of the Middle Ages. Likewise, there is a strong tendency among American students, and not only Americans, to see in the Middle Ages an alternative, an escape from the contemporary world, an escape that finds its way into uh, fantasy literature and the like. And so in my teaching with American students, I try to help them understand medieval culture, but in a way that is more respectful of the past. European students, I find, much more aware of the political, social issues present in modern culture as an inheritance, for good or for bad, of the Middle Ages, and thus of the dangers of the inheritance of medieval uh, civilization, culture, and institutions. Thus, when I teach American students, I try to encourage them to understand the very real issues at stake within an understanding and a life in a post-medieval world, rather than seeing this as an opportunity to escape modernity. And when I teach European students, I try to encourage them to understand how very different the Middle Ages in terms of institutions, culture, and society are from the presence in order to make them more aware of the dangers of manipulation of this past by ideologues.